In microbiology, there are a number of techniques scientists and doctors can use to detect the presence of microorganisms or microscopic compounds. The ELISA or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay is one such technique. Used for detecting and quantifying substances such as proteins and antibodies that may be linked to a specific microbe or type of cell. Hello, my name is Jack Wang and I'm a microbiologist and science educator based in Australia. Today we will go through an experimental technique that underpins many of the diagnostic tests that you can purchase over the counter. Rapid antigen tests, pregnancy tests, or use a version of the ELISA to generate a positive or negative test result in the form of visible color changes on a diagnostic strip. The assay is done in stages, usually in a 96 well plate. Each well acts as an individual environment, so you can have multiple variations or replicates of the same experiment on one single plate. The first stage of this assay involves coating your antigen to the plate. The antigen can be a range of things, including whole cells, viruses, or specific hormones in the case of the pregnancy test, which are mixed with a coating buffer and applied to the wells. The second stage involves adding a blocking buffer to the wells. Some antigens are inherently sticky, and will bind non-specifically leading to false positive results. The blocking buffer neutralizes these sticky regions so that any binding that occurs is specific. The third stage is the addition of a primary antibody. These antibodies only bind to a specific type of antigen. The fourth stage is the addition of secondary antibody. This type of antibody binds to a range of primary antibodies, which allows for more versatility in the number of primary antibodies that can be used in one experiment. This is the reason why it's called an indirect ELISA. The secondary antibody also has a conjugate which releases a signal when we develop it. The final stage is signal development where we add a substrate reacting with the conjugate on the secondary antibody. If the secondary antibody is present, the liquid in the well will change color and the more antibodies that bind, the more intense the color change. The intensity of this color change can later be quantified using a spectrophotometer. Let's see an ELISA in practice. The exact details of this assay can vary between different experiments, but the general principles remain the same. The workbench area is set up with a waste bucket, reagent trough, wash buffer, and an absorbent mat. The SC contains the coating buffer, blocking buffer, primary and secondary antibodies, and substrate buffer. Antigen already diluted and coating buffer is poured into the trough and added to a 96 well plate using a multi-channel pipette. When loading tips onto a multi-channel pipette, you should also manually secure each of the tips from the base because they can be loose and sometimes give inaccurate results across your wells. When taking up liquid, check that the level of liquid is the same for all the tips. And once all the antigen is applied, check the plate to ensure that all the liquid levels of each well are consistent. You should check the plate like this continually throughout the experiment. The plate is then incubated at four degrees Celsius overnight. The antigen is now bound to the plate. However, there is also unbound antigen and coating buffers still present. Simply flick the plate upside down into the waste container to remove the liquid in the plate and you tap the plate a few times on the absorbent mat to remove any residual liquid. We can now move on to the second stage of the ELISA and add the blocking buffer, same as before. Again, check to make sure that a consistent volume of liquid is applied to each of the wells. The plate is then incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 to 60 minutes. After the blocking incubation, flick the plate and clear it of the buffer. It's now time to add the primary antibody. The plate is then incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 to 60 minutes. And at this point, the primary antibody should have bound the antigen. However, before the secondary antibody can be applied, any unbound primary antibody needs to be washed off in washing buffer. To do this, flick the contents in the plate into the waste container and pour the washing buffer into the now empty plate. Make sure that all the wells are filled, give it a shake and flick it into the waste again. Repeat this process for a total of three washes. And the reason for the washing is to remove unbound primary antibodies which could otherwise result in false positive readings that we don't want. Finally, add the secondary antibody to the plate. And incubate the plate for 30 to 60 minutes. This is the last step in the ELISA. However, before the substrate buffer can be added, any unbound secondary antibodies need to be washed off.
final stage is signal development, where we add a substrate reacting with the conjugate on the secondary antibody. In this instance, the substrate buffer is light sensitive, so once it has been added, it needs to be incubated in the dark for 30 to 60 minutes. This plate is now ready for analysis on a plate reader. Notice how some wells are darker than others. This is because those wells had more antigen binding and are able to give up a stronger signal because of the increased antigen binding. The plate reader will read the intensity of the color in the well and give you a numerical reading, which you can use for a variety of data analyses. The ELISA allows scientists to visualize the presence or absence of microscopic molecules with a simple color reading, but how does it work for over-the-counter diagnostic tests, antibodies against the virus in rapid antigen tests, or specific hormones in pregnancy tests are already bound to the testing strip when you buy it. If the target protein is present in your biological sample, whether it be a nose swab, throat swab, or a urine sample, it will bind to the antibodies on the testing strip and lead to a color change. The miniaturization of plate-based ELISA assays that take hours to do to small testing strips that you can take out into the field and you get a result within 10, 20, 30 minutes has made a huge difference to public health in all parts of the world, especially the developing areas. Overall, the ELISA is a very powerful technique that is crucial to biological research as well as efforts to advance our knowledge overall. This is the Biolab Collective. I'm Jack Wayne and I'll see you in the next video.